Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the Legal Eagle XL and some engine options. Now, the one that's missing here, and I don't have one uh, available, but I spent 450 hours on this airplane behind a half VW, a Scott Kassler, 45 horsepower, and I spent another 75 hours and another Legal Eagle behind a uh, 45 horsepower half VW that I built myself. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with the half VW. They're great engines and uh, they're a great way to go. Uh, in terms of weight, uh, they're going to be uh, very competitive with the small Briggs and Stratton, the BSV 23, and with the Werner, the 3V Werner. Uh, the big Briggs and Stratton, the BS uh, V35, which has about the same horsepower performance as the 45 horsepower half VW or the Werner 3V, uh, is a great engine, except it is heavy. Uh, the base engine with the flywheel and intake manifolds removed, uh, with the starter and everything else removed, the small engine is 51 pounds, the big engine's 81 pounds, and everything is bigger and heavier on that big engine. It gives you the power, and it does everything you'd want it to do, but it also gives you weight. On this particular airplane, in this particular configuration, I had to add eight pounds of weight to the tail to bring things back into uh, a CG level that was comfortable. And uh, uh, I've got a spreadsheet that'll be coming up here real soon that'll give you all the exact numbers, but it's roughly 62 pounds heavier than the Werner, the half VW, or the BSV 23. Now, uh, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and flying out of a little strip uh, away away from everybody, uh, you'd probably be a great engine and wouldn't have to worry about anything. But for the rest of us that are trying to get real close to part 103, the viable options are the half VW, the BSV 23, and the Werner 3V. Now, the advantages of the Werner and the BSV 23 is the fact that you get electric start. The half VWs do not have electric start. You've got to hand prop them. They're easy to hand prop. You stand behind them, uh, and as they start, they pull away from you. And uh, they're they're not a concern. They're easy to prop and easy to operate, and uh, nothing wrong with them. Now, in terms of horsepower, because everybody's worried about weight and horsepower, and the weight of these three engines, the half VW, the Werner, and the small Briggs and Stratton are all real close together. The advantage of the two uh, the Werner and the Briggs and Stratton, you've got electric start, and you've also got a charging system. Now, you can remove the charging system and the electric start and save a little bit more weight, but uh, it's sure nice to have a key to be able to start that engine. Anyway, uh, in terms of comments on these engines, the, the Cadillac engine, in my mind, and my flight time, would have to be the three-cylinder Werner. It's the most expensive uh, you're looking at about roughly in a $9,000 area for an engine. And then you got your prop, your batteries, your oil tank, your everything else that goes with it. And uh, I'm not sure of the cost of the 45 half VW at this point in time, but I believe they're in the $6,500 uh, to $7,000 range, which is not inexpensive uh, if you've got where you can scrounge up parts and pieces, you can put one together yourself for probably considerably less than that. But if you're just wanting to buy an engine to mount on the airplane, uh, that's kind of what you're looking at for the half VW. Now that would be with a magneto start or magneto ignition, manual start, put a wood prop on it. 
uh, composite props do not work on the half VWs. Redrives do not work on the half VWs. The Werner is 2500 maximum RPM, doesn't need a redrive, it's direct drive. The little Briggs and Stratton, you need a redrive. It drops it from uh, 1.8 to 1, uh, and your torque goes up, and you increase the RPM. The factory originals are set up for 3600 RPM. I'm turning this particular engine at max aircraft gross weight uh, up to 4300 and I'm getting good, decent performance out of it. And uh, the, the thing that I'm seeing is a lot of people that have never built an airplane, uh, and they're starting to say, wow, what about the, uh, the half, uh, the, the uh, little Briggs and Stratton uh, instead of a half VW? Well, if your choice is a half VW or a Briggs and Stratton, uh, your Briggs and Stratton uh, you have to stop and ask yourself some basic questions. All of the testing I've been doing is at maximum gross weight. Because if it won't fly me and my airplane on maximum gross weight on the hot days uh, in our conditions here, then it's not a product you'd want to release to anybody. Now, if you are going to be a 170 to 200 pound pilot, and you're not going to be flying over tall trees all around your airport, and uh, you're not going to be flying out of a, a five or 6,000 foot elevation airport, uh, you've probably got a real nice engine there. It's a fun engine. It's very easy to start. It starts, you very seldom ever have to choke it. Uh, it just cranks up and runs. And, uh, 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 you know, to get hours on these engines, there's going to have to be multiple people follow the similar process, put the same engine on, and start building hours. And that's the only way that a year from now or two years from now we can say, hey, we got collectively a thousand hours on these engines, and this is what we found. Anyway, uh, whether you're a low time pilot or a high time pilot, uh, and if you're not flying at max gross weight with trees at high altitudes or high density altitudes, uh, you're in pretty good shape. Uh, if your goal is to fly and enjoy flying, uh, it's not a bad engine to go with. Uh, it, uh, the climb rate of that engine, of course, it's only meant to be in the 28, 30 horsepower alternative Vols half VW. So you can't really compare it to the to the Werner uh, or the 45 horsepower half VW or the even the big Briggs and Stratton. And what I do is I look at getting over and around these trees around here. And I've never had any problems. Um, this engine, if as a small half VW, you'd have the same same horsepower range. And uh, they just don't quite, quite, quite climb as consistent and well as the bigger horsepower. Any airplane, the more horsepower you have, the better they're going to climb. Now, when you get up and get cruising, uh, the speed is not that much different than the Werner uh, or the half VW. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to get up to the altitude, but uh, it has never been a problem. It's given me a lot of... Uh, indication of of, uh, of redundancy. I, I had a file plug. I was able to stay in the air and get back and circle a couple of times and land. Um, and it has the dual ignition. Um, I had one of the mags got grounded one day, so I lost one wire or one cylinder, and it continued to run. Uh, not something you'd want to climb out to do it, but it was running. And I've lost a head gasket. And uh, uh, that was due to manufacturing uh, <laughs> machine error that uh, uh, you wouldn't run into in an aircraft engine. And I hate to say it, but compared to the half VW or the Werner, it's something you wouldn't find in those engines. But uh, these lawnmower engines are basically not manufactured to the same tolerances as the aircraft engines or the half VWs. But it done good, and I uh, can't complain about it. Uh, it's just, it's a fun engine to fly. Uh, my fuel tank is down low in my fuselage, so consequently I have to have a fuel pump. 
if my tank was up in the wing where they belongs uh, for, for normal people and for that's where Leonard's got it shown and, and designed, uh, you don't need a fuel pump. It's got dual Makuni carburetors and uh, they take care of they take care of the fuel real well. I've got the heavy cast iron flywheel on it right now, so I have electrical system. It uh, smooths the engine out just a little bit. And uh, anyway, uh, it is a good, good engine. Um, I've got mufflers on it. I like quiet. My hearing is not as good as it used to be years ago. And uh, so I, I like the quiet. Now, one of the things that we're going to be looking at and uh, revising some drawings, this is anchored solid to the firewall, the same place you'd anchor the half VW, and then the rubber bushings are down here on the engine. And on the bigger engine, I've done something a little bit different. Uh, what I've done is I've anchored this big engine to the engine mount. And then up here on the back of the engine mount, you might recognize those rubber bushings. That's where the half VW mounts. And so the vibration is taken up up there. And uh, uh, I'm thinking this type of a mount with the small Briggs and Stratton might work out better. So uh, I'm going to be revising drawings and showing that option. And... Uh, uh, Anyway, that's kind of where we're at. Now, the battery that I'm using is this little Scorpion. It's a Scorpion Stinger. Uh, it weighs one pound, uh, like one ounce. Very light, but it sure cranks up the the uh, the engines. Now, on uh, the big Briggs and Stratton, it takes quite a bit of power to turn this critter over. So I had to move it up close to the starter. Uh, so I wouldn't get the line losses in the electrical wiring. And at that point in time, it cranked it over and done everything it was supposed to. Anyway, uh, the big Briggs and Stratton, by the way, had the stock carburetor. Uh, that's what I used to power it. If a person wanted a little bit more power and went with the, uh, the dual Makunis and maybe up the RPM a little bit. Uh, but on this engine, power is not the problem. Weight is the problem. Anyway, the Werner is the Cadillac of the engines. It is lightweight. Uh, it's not, I shouldn't say lightweight. That's not correct. It's, uh, it's, it's 2,500 RPM, and you've got more torque than any of the other engines. And uh, uh, you've got the same horsepower. So you end up with an engine that's fairly light, operates at low RPM, a higher efficiency prop, a bigger prop. That prop is kind of fun watching it when you're flying. You get the sun just right. If you ever wonder what it would be like to sit behind a Mustang and see that huge prop out in front of you, that's what this wood prop looks like when you get the sun reflecting on it just right. Anyway, just some comments here and uh, uh, looking forward to some builders getting this uh, small Briggs and Stratton. Uh, and setting on their airplanes. It's a completely stock engine, uh, and uh, everything's bolt-on. The Makuni, uh, the intake for the two Makunis is something that a person's got to build, but by the time you've built the airplane, that's no big deal. Piece of cake. Engine mounts are a piece of cake after you've built the rest of the airplane. And uh, anyway, just some comments on the on the three engines, actually four engines, but I don't have a half VW. I'd love to have one sitting here so we could get a comparison of it to compare with these three.